Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. I thought I might just play around with making a journal. I'm going to be doing this with my craft group next Wednesday, so I thought I'd give myself a bit of a head start. I got the idea of an altered playing card journal from Cat Han. I'm sure most of you have seen Cat's channel. It's a wonderful channel full of lots of lovely, interesting, fun ideas that you can do with paper and mixed media, paints. She always seems to do them in um, like small journals, she, she does. She used to do, always do four by four. So yes, if you like doing working on small projects and just want something quick and easy, scale down your journal. <laughs> so anyway, what I thought I would do with my group on Wednesday uh, to show them how to make a journal, I would make one of these journals like this. Now these are my prototypes. This one didn't work from the point of view; it wasn't big enough. So the idea is is that you're going to make use your altered cards. If you've already got some like I have that I made ages ago, I do find that some of these cards, I used to do them, the way I learnt originally was that you glue three cards together to make them stable, but then I found they were too thick to put in a journal, so they've just been hanging around in a box. So I've got these ones that I made ages ago, and the ones in these journals I made ages ago as well, and I don't use them in journals because they're just too thick. I suggest leaving them single thickness. If they're really floppy then make them two but I would suggest just single thickness and we're going to put them in a journal. So I started with this little little journal here. <laughs> I got the sizes all wrong. If you look at if you've seen Kat's video you'll know that her journal is more this size and allows you to put a card and have a border. So that's the general concept is that we will make a journal that's big enough to put your playing card in and then do a pretty border so so like this I just did this at the cover this is another card that I made ages ago but again was too thick I've also got one at the back I made a little pocket and had a little tag in there um, so all I did was you know made the journal decorate the page in the colors that match the card that I was choosing so this journal is what we're going to be making next week well I'm going to be making it today <laughs> so that's the concept you do have to get your sizes right obviously I don't know how I managed to make it so small <laughs> but I did anyway it's super cute let me show you for some reason I decided I needed, needed a big border big spine on this one you don't I don't think you need one this big it's, it's kind of an awkward it stands up nicely it stands up like a square so that's that's quite good um, but I'm not putting cards in it because some of my cards were too big and there's nowhere to put them and there's no border and I mean you could just do it as a flip through of cards but anyway I didn't so what I did was I actually uh, just sewed in white paper and that was another boo-boo because the white paper didn't go with the brown paper packaging <laughs> so then I stenciled them um, to blend them in to be vintage style and and chose these are cards that I've made ages ago and so I just put a butterfly on that one and made it the front cover. So most of my altered cards were made a long time ago but just not used. So I loved Kat's idea of making a journal just for our altered cards because I find, yeah, they're just too big for, too thick for journals. By the time, you know, you put a lot of embellishments on them and um, use chunky items. So the idea is just to make a spine big enough to allow for chunky cards that might have chunky embellishments on them but maybe not this wide, this was too big. So anyway, in the end, this is just a cute book. I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll just leave it as it is. <laughs> it, it's there. So, but this is more the prototype of what we're actually going to be making today. And all you need is items that you've got around the house. Let me show you. I'm sure most of you have got um, drawing books, sketch pads, watercolor pads, that kind of thing in your stash. Um, this is just a kid's one. Just kids paper I don't know how much it costs probably a dollar or two best thing about this is going to be the cardboard so we're going to use the back of a sketch pad um, as our book board it's really thick it makes it makes a really sturdy book and you know makes it look quite professional if you like and you want something I think you want something reasonably sturdy to hold your mixed media cards because they can be could be quite you know heavy so this kind of sketchbook card at the back if not you can use a cereal box and glue a few pieces together then wait for them to dry because they get a bit soggy um, and then cut them up but pretty sure most of us have got sketchbooks 
or if not they're really cheap in the two dollar stores where you can get a cheap sketchbook well this was four dollars but you know you end up with 180 gsm paper to use uh, plus the back of the book what you'll also need is a shopping bag so you'll need a paper bag or two depending on the size that you end up doing and if you have any boo-boos because you're going to have to cut off you're also going to have to cut off the handles and probably cut off the base so i've pre-prepared uh, some pieces of chipboard as you call it so normal playing cards are two and a half inches by three and a half inches now there are some older ones that are only two and a, two and a quarter inches three and a half so the height's the same but you can see the size is slightly smaller now i prefer the wider style than the skinny one so i'm not going to use the skinny cards i've got these wider cards which these are just singapore airlines cards i'm going to be using those so you you might want to think about what size cards you're using you could also use the oversized playing cards if you don't like working in a smaller size you could go with the, the jumbo cards so you can usually find these at op shops and things it's quite a lot larger um, or if you don't have any playing cards or you don't want to use the playing cards you've got you could also get some of these flash cards they look like they're about the same size as the jumbo just a little bit smaller and i've even got these jumbo jumbo look at these <laughs> journal sized ones <laughs> they would be fun to work with too wouldn't they but i'm going to stick with the normal size for this project oh and i've got these too which these kind of, these kinds of things come out of oh i don't know where they come out of sometimes they come out of crackers look at these tinsy tiny ones that would be um fiddly I'm trying to do mixed media on those and there's another pack here of small ones so use whatever size playing card you've got or that you want to to uh, work on just think about how easy or difficult you would find it you know working on tiny cards i think i would find that a bit too fiddly so we're not doing that although they would be cute as a tuck in you know you make a little tuck spot like this one here i've got a card and a tuck i could use a card for that you know mixed media and it makes a perfect size tuck card instead of making one out of a card board or cardstock so anyway you could use if you've got the little ones you could use those as tucking tucking ones so all you're going to need to start with to make the book is uh, the thick cardboard and a paper bag you can do it with just the paper bag I, I do it with the paper bag with this one just paper bag um, but you can see it's got a little crack and I used flexible glue but that's cracked I don't know why only it's only one spot <laughs> has to be at the front um, so then I thought about okay maybe I should reinforce the paper so you could I'm going to do that this one I used can't see because it it's all glued up packaging paper but it's actually thinner than the than the supermarket bag so I found that was more difficult and more likely to um, break so I ended up putting a layer of glue over the whole thing which is why it's a different sort of color just to try and give it some sturdiness and I also used the gauze as an afterthought <laughs> inside but this time we're going to hide the gauze so you, you won't see it so it, you know it, it's starting to sound a bit complicated but that's just because when you're using paper it, it could get uh, soggy and tear so I would suggest not using your PVA glue um, you want to be using something like the Boyle's craft glue um, I bought this from spotlight the other day bonds fabric paper and cardboard acid free dries clear so there's that one uh, there's also you know, your Fabri-Tac and your fabric glue but any of these sort of silicone clear glues that nearly all of them well I'm pretty sure all of them say on them that they're flexible and so they'll bend whereas your your PVA glue when it dries it dries like a rock so when you glue these cards together it becomes like a tile it's it's solid as a rock because it's got three cards but it's not the cards it's the glue the glue makes it very sturdy and stiff so if you can imagine gluing that around your book 
I once got a journal and I could hardly open it. <laughs> I ordered it off Etsy and it creaked because it had been glued up with PVA glue. And I guess the girl hadn't realized what would happen. And so she's made it, folded it, you know, finished it and then sent it without opening it. And <laughs> it took ages to get it open. Um, so that's when I realized I need to use, uh, you need to use flexible glue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is reinforce uh, the the spine. Now I don't want it to go, I only want this to be the, the length of the spine. So I'm going to start with a, a neat edge and I just want, I just want the spine. I'm just and I'm going to let the edge go over. This is perfect size. This is like bandage, I think. So you can use bandage or you can use something like cheesecloth. I used this last time, but I found that this was actually hard to glue because it's very flimsy and goes all over the place. Um, this roll of bandage was easier to work with. I'm actually going to put it on the thinner paper. So I've just got this piece. I'll cut it down when I finish, when I finish gluing it on. So I'm going to glue that onto there. This was going to be a really, really easy way to make a journal, which it still is. It's just that I want to reinforce it. Whereas before, I just got the brown paper and folded it over, but then I got that cracking. So I'm going to try to not get the cracking. So we don't need those pieces for the moment. And if you don't have some webbing or you can um, or, or bandage, you can use um, gauze, um, thin, really thin, you know, cotton, cotton fabric. Um, that would work too. And, and leave some on the edge. So that's how I'm going to do it. And then our pieces will go on here, like so. So now we're gonna put glue on to our little spine. Now I don't want glue to go down the edges um, because I don't want to weaken the paper in any, at all. So you only wanna do it on the flat surfaces. So it's gonna go in the center there. Just hold that down for a sec. Yeah, you don't want to have it longer than the than the spine because you don't want to have to double fold it when you when you come to fold that over the top. You don't want to have to fold this all as well. So you're just having it um, like that. So that's our spine prepared. This is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to pop this here and here. So it would be a good idea, I think, to put the glue on on the um, edge of the board to get it up to the edge and then smush that down a bit. You don't really want ooze either. And then glue the rest of this. Just gluing some on the edge of that and then on the paper. Okay, and let's pop that onto that. Leaving around about um, two millimeters, is it an eighth of an inch thereabouts? Just enough, you want to be able to fold it up easily. and you want it to be straight, and you want it to be level. Did I tell you the sizes? No. Okay, so the sizes I used, <laughs> not very organized, am I? If you want to see how to do this properly, then watch Treasure Books. I think, I think it was Treasure Books who made this, um, without the gauze, she made it with the paper bags. So my piece of card is four and a quarter inches by, it's meant to be five inches, it's actually just under. And before we do all that, let's just smooth all this down. Make sure that it's flat and that it folds. So now we've got that, which hopefully will reinforce that spine. And when we put the paper over it, it shouldn't crack because the pressure is now all on this. Now once you've done this, you could actually then cover it in fabric or whatever you like. It doesn't have to be paper. But the idea of this is that anyone can make a book, anyone can make a journal from stuff they have at home. Old, old, thin old bed sheets that are worn so thin you can't use them anymore. You can use that for the gauze, cardboard, or cereal boxes, or the back of sketchbooks and um, grocery bags. So, you know, you really can Let's put that there. 
sure it's straight and turn it over. But just make sure it's straight all the way down and the same distance, that's a little bit thinner. You've got a little bit of wiggle room with the, um, the Hoyle's glue. Okay, seems to be okay. Okay, and the spine. <laughs> You'll get all the measurements eventually. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, the spine happens to be three quarters of an inch. I think that's going to be a good size. So that's what this size is, I believe. No, nope. no, nope. this is an inch, so I've gone slightly smaller. I decided that might be a bit, still a bit too big. So three quarters of an inch or an inch, whatever you think is, is good. Next, so we've got that. And you want to make sure that it, it see how it bends nicely. So we've got the basics, basics of a book, but we're going to cover it with the, uh, the Coles bag. Then if I, can, if I can save anything of it, I can use it. Oh, there's a join there. I didn't realise that. Okay, let's get rid of the join. Yay. One giant piece. One giant bag. You can also, you can also take off the handles. And you can save the handles and use them, you know, on a bag journal or something. Okay, so we've got a piece. I'm going to um, put that on the outside of the book so that it, it doesn't have any of the writing showing. I'm gluing the writing to the inside. Don't worry about neatening off the edge, that will not matter. And so we're going to just glue this. You want to leave about an inch, three quarters of an inch. It's, it's actually three quarters of an inch. You could do a little bit more, a little bit less, probably no less. All right, so now we're still going to use this glue and we're just going to do the corners first. So this is the easy method. Um, we're not going to do hosp hospital corners where you, you trim it off and you fold it in. We're going to do um, pan from the paper outpost. She does these easy corners. So, you know, I get my ideas from YouTube like the rest of us. <laughs> I don't. I occasionally I come up with an idea that's mine, but it really is only occasional. So the idea is, is to get your corners ready. So folding, folding them this way, just diagonal. And you can do it straight, it doesn't really matter actually. Make a nice neat corner and then just use your fingernail, just, or you can use a bone folder, because I don't really have any fingernails, I've bitten, bitten it off. Pop that in there so that it's, it wants to go there. Okay. So we're just gonna go around and glue the corners. So you want glue all on that whole triangle. It's a little bit a little bit runnier than Fabri-Tac, so I find it easier to use. And plus, here in Australia, you can't get Fabri-Tac. You have to order it, and it's very expensive. And I just find it too thick and hard to work with. It's great for fabric, but um, yeah, just uh, you know, as soon as, as soon as you smush it, it's basically dry. Whereas these 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 are not. So I've got time to do this. Now you just want to. Smush it down nice and firm. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is um, train your paper. So you want it to be trained. Oh, you actually probably want to train it to do its corners too. Um. <laughs> We're supposed to glue the paper to this thing first. Hmm. Okay, this is a great tutorial, isn't it? Don't do what I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I have seen even Treasure Books makes mistakes sometimes and she admits it, so I don't think she's made this mistake. <laughs> and Pam does too. We all do. Sometimes if we can, we edit them out. <laughs> Can't do anything about it this time. Um, Maybe we should glue the paper down before we do that. Oh dear. 
It's going to be hard getting it in the same spot too. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> Can't believe I didn't glue that. So let's do the glue. I'm going to put glue everywhere. At least it's all in one piece. Now you just want to go to the edge. I don't really want to go over the edge. I'm thinking that I want it, I don't want it too soggy on the edge. Oh, Kevin's having a dream. It's funny, he doesn't make much noise in real life, but he does when he's dreaming. Makes you wonder what he's thinking. Okay, and then the spine. Hopefully I've got enough time to do the whole thing. Now you want to cover everywhere, but just not right on that edge. Because if you don't cover everywhere, it might get little bubbles. I find with Fabri-Tac, it's almost impossible to get right to the edge. Okay, let's see how we've done with the edges. Might need to do it a little bit closer. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be impossible to get it in the same place. Almost impossible, I would think. Shame, isn't it? Let's try, though. As I say, you do have a little bit of wiggle room. Oh. Maybe. Okay, just say that that's the right place. Make sure it's all smushed down. Just going to press on those lines a little bit. And you can see this paper is quite um, sturdy, the paper bag. Now you can also use a credit card, which I don't have here either. Bone folder there, so let's use that. Just to make sure you haven't missed any spots, you really want to have that. Now, while it's still a little bit wet, you want to fold it. Okay, so that should now, the way I've done that, not, yeah, I think that should work better than what I, the other way I did it. Okay, cool, done that not really sticky enough so we're going to put more glue on it's only paper and glue it's always it can be fixed it's just going to be a little bit thicker on the corners than it should have been and you know you're using basically junk or recyclable items so if you mess up that's all right get another one you get a couple of um, books out of one board at this size and you know grocery bags he doesn't have too many of those I try to use my fabric bags and reuse them but people who get home deliveries it comes in the paper bags so there's an abundance of them now you want to if, if I've, I've changed that now so I'm gonna have to make sure that that's you know meeting the corner I don't want it to be a, a, a daggy end you know it needs to be a tight corner okay all right, back to the where we were. <laughs> With it glued down. Excellent. That's what I like about this uh, fat, this Hoyle's glue. It's not too wet. As I say, PVA glue, you can try it, but it's... Uh, if, I think if you're going to use PVA glue, you should use the tacky glue. I presume the tacky glue is less wet, because I just find the PVA glue was just like soaking it with water. It was very messy. It did. I managed it. Uh, which one did I use? Do it with. I think I did this one with it, and I coat. What I did was I did the paper right to the edge, so that there's very little of the brown paper showing. But you can see the edges are not nice. I don't like the edge, and you can't you cover it with lace. We. I suppose I could have before I put this on. Yeah, that's what I should have done. But it would have covered up this little picture. And this little picture. Um, it's really gorgeous. I found it in my um, stash of cards. I had bought this card from a lady from the arts and my arts and crafts group. They make cards, and um, I just thought it was so pretty. I bought a few, and then I chose a different one to give to the gift. Well, I don't know whose gift it was, but anyway, and I had this, so I just put this one in my card stash. Now it's not ideal <laughs> for a journal because I've had to glue some of the bits down. Probably what I should have done was taken the sponge off and glued them all flat because it's going to get damaged but it's just so pretty so I, yeah, I glued these ones down because they were <laughs> getting caught on everything um, but yeah um, we have some lovely artists at our group that make really cute cards and other things anyway so I think that was made by Sue who will be joining us for our 
journal group. So now we're up to the stage where I was at to before. So we're going to train our paper before we glue it. So we're just going to fold it over like that. We just want it to know where it's going and be happy where it's going without the glue to mess it up. You can do it at the same time if you want to, but I just think it's easier to have it trained. Now all we need to do is glue those down. I don't want too much glue. I see people putting a lot of glue on the side here. I actually don't want too much glue on the side there because I just don't want the paper to be soggy on the edges and because the edge is where um, is the bit that you'll see the most. This part is going to be covered up. Now I'm going to smush it just so I don't get a thick glug of paper going in there and then you might want to use a bone folder to um, get it up. Squish that down as flat as possible. It does make slightly bulky corners, but if you look at an actual book, you'll find that they're the same. This one is more bulky than usual. I'll make that to the back. So you don't see it every time you open it. Um, and this side, probably should have done the doesn't matter they don't meet so it doesn't matter which side you do as I say this is Pam's easy way because she doesn't like doing hospital corners um, she used to do it but she's decided no I'm not doing it that way it's too fiddly sometimes it doesn't come out neat I tried I'm the same you know sometimes you can make make a perfect corner but can you make four perfect corners on one journal hmm sometimes not so I find I'd rather have four corners the same than you know three corners perfect and one not and you don't notice the corners once it's made so these corners this way of doing it is way easier than um, the other way what that piece of paper is doing I'm gonna get rid of it smush it so I don't get a big glog and then just tip it over Push it down, gently squish it into that corner, into those lines. You don't want to press too firmly because you might break the paper because it does have glue on it so it's soft. But this paper is quite nice and firm. I don't know why that's so thick. Shame, I should have realised that it was, you know, it's a double thickness. It must have a piece of that other paper still glued to it. Okay. And then this side. Now fold them gently and carefully so you don't tear any paper. And just train it to close. It wants to flip up, that might be because it's slightly too close together. I think it will, yeah, once it's trained, it will. You can bend it slightly. I don't, don't bend it too far. I bent mine too far and that's when I cracked it. But this one, because of the reinforcing, I can see it's not going to crack. So I'm happy with that. Oh, look, now it's flat. Now it's got this line, so I'm going to, I think it'll be less noticeable at the top. But it doesn't matter, honestly, by the time you've covered it, you're really not going to see it. Um, if it bothers you, then find a piece of that Coles bag, supermarket bag that doesn't have a line or a crease on it. But yeah, it doesn't matter. And anyway, this is mostly just practicing. You know, we're making a journal and we're learning how to do it from scratch. Okay, so I'm just going to try pressing it down and squash it as hard as I can without damaging the core. Oh, that's better. Squish flat. Maybe it just got a big glob of glue or something. Oh, that's better. Oh, I can hardly tell now. When we make the uh, pages, which we'll do next, they'll go in there and 
when we put a card on there, we'll have plenty of room for prettiness around the edge. So it really becomes a focal point, you know, with room to decorate the edges. Have a look at Cat Hand's video. She does a nice modern, modern style. These, of course, are more vintage style. You can do whatever style you want in your um, altered card book. So now we want to decorate the inside. Because I don't want to see the, the webbing or the cardboard, I want to cover this all the way across. So I think I just want some neutral paper that's not too thick. Now I think I've got the perfect thing. Just one moment. I've been having some fun make, doing some projects. I've been making faux, what is this, faux textured paper. Hmm, that one looks a bit mouldy. I don't think I like that one. That one's quite nice. I like this one because it's just plain. And they're coloured, so I don't know what colour, you know, my card's going to be on the beginning, at the beginning. So I think something neutral that goes with the brown paper might be nice. And this is just basically, I coloured some paper with piece of paint and then I put napkin over the top and glued it down. I mean that was the first piece I did and actually that's one of my favourites. So I'm thinking well, let's just put one whole piece on there. It will actually be you know quite, it's because it's got glue, napkin and paper it will be quite sturdy but it's still quite thin. Okay we've got some pieces left over that we can use. Keep those. Right, now we've got this, okay? All right, so we're going to glue. It's either use art glue to glue around the edge or smush it with our fingers, or maybe I'll just smush it. A bit tacky in places now already. I'm just going to lightly place it where it's supposed to go. And then I'm going to press the, um, gently press the seams in so that if it needs to move to accommodate that, maybe I should have folded it first. Not sure. I guess this is where I get it in the right place. I'm just gently, only gently training it. But now I'm going to smush the spine down. Since now I want it to definitely, I don't want it to bubble up, you see, because it is thicker than normal. I want it to go into there a little bit. I better start smushing this down too before it dries. It's quite rough, this um, textured paper. <laughs> it's rough on your fingers. So not perfect. Hmm. Not perfect by any means. But you won't normally see both at the same time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know me. I don't get it perfect. Now we need to smush this down. It's not wanting to stay and fold. Okay, it's kind of doing it differently to what I imagined, but pushing that in. But because it's textured, you won't actually notice if there's any creases. I just want to make sure that the spine stays glued. Just make sure those edges are well down. Okay, I think that's worked. <laughs> All right, that's our um, our journal made, or the cover made. So the next job is to put the binding in and then make the pages. I'm going to go find some twine to use to make the spine back in a moment. Okay, so you can use Baker's twine. That's what I used here. I had some pink to match the pink picture, so I was happy with that. I haven't got yellow, and so I'm not going to use Baker's twine on this because I don't know what colour, I don't know what I'm putting on the board, on the um, covers yet, on this one. Could use... This is just twine as well, silver and gold thread. This, but this doesn't tie. It comes undone very easily. I'm not keen on that one. Oh, what did I think of? I thought of something. Oh yeah, this one. 
So I've got my book binding waxed thread. So I'm thinking this one, I never use this one, it's so thick. I think I use this. It's a nice neutral colour. So it won't matter to make your own binding. Now you might want to decorate it first before you put this on. But I'm just going to show you how I do it. And then, because um, I'm not going to decorate this at the moment. I'm just going to um, have this to show people. So all you do is you get your twine, hold it in place here, say, anywhere here, it doesn't really matter, somewhere where it's easy for you to reach. Okay, there. And then wind it round three times. One, two, three. Now that's if you're having three signatures, of course. Uh, okay, hold that there and then cut off a piece so that you've got enough to tie with. Now don't worry about the positioning of them too much, but you just want them taut, tight. So pulling that tight, move this up and just tie it across. Now you want to slip this piece underneath. And then where you want to have your bow finish, it could be in the middle, or it could be towards the top. I prefer it towards the top. Okay. So you know you want to pull it tight. Pull that tight and that tight. Okay, so just hold your knot and then tie another knot over the top of that. And yeah, wax thread doesn't like to move once it's um, tied up, so that's quite good. I quite like that. I'll just I'll do that length for now. And then you just separate your pieces out. And they're quite tight. If you don't like the um, strings sticking up or moving around, you can glue them down. In actual fact, you could cover the strings at the back. And that will also help to keep them in place if you wanted to do that way. I often glue down my, my spine strings and then this won't, these won't move much at all and they'll stay tight like guitar strings. Okay, so that's your binding done. All you have to do now is make your pages. Now you could just fold cardstock if you like. That's the easiest way, just slide them in. But... Uh, yeah, if you use cardstock, then it will be um, more sturdy. However, it will be patterned on one side, white on the other. Or it might be patterned on both sides. But then you'll have that pattern to deal with, which might not match the card that you're making. So I didn't want to use um, cardstock because I didn't want to have to cover up the cardstock. It's like, what's the point? Or you could just use plain, neutral coloured cardstock, like a, to match that. Actually, that might be quite nice. Hmm might do that one moment okay I remembered I have had this paper in there it's quite it's quite thick and this color I think blue blobs matches quite nicely oh. well let's make some and see <laughs> let's just make it the right height Oh, I think that will do. I think that'll be quite nice. <laughs> I'm just going to make three of these pieces, but give it a, a crisper fold. Okay, let's make three of these. Same height. Right. Hmm. It's good to put the middle one in first. Two. Go the other way. Three. Uh, how do they end up too long? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trim off some of the the length. At least they can come in and out easily, and you can work on them like that too. So. 
them all together and trim them all. I'm just going to guesstimate, I can't bother measuring this time. One's slightly bigger than the other, but that doesn't matter. Have it straight. And I'm going to guesstimate that much off. And so you just go through until you've got all of them done. Holding your ruler nice and firm and a sharp knife. Great. There we go. Okay, done. So the string will annoy me. So I probably will actually just tack a bit of it down here. Just tack it down there. Let's do that. I'm just going to use a bit of. I'm going to use a bit of fabric. Uh, well, it's not fabric tack, but you know, similar to fabric tack. It's just this one dries a little bit quicker than the hoils. Don't want. I'm actually maybe I'll just squish it onto the actual string. And then just put it down there. Maybe it'll just keep it from flipping up as it's partially glued down or it's stiffened up with the uh, the glue. So that is the beginnings of our journal. And then you just get some cardstock and um, decorate the front. You can use leftover pieces and a card that you've decorated. Use a card or you can just use something else and you can put lace or whatever you want on there whatever kind of decorations you want we're not going to decorate today um, i just wanted to show you how to make a book that you can use for any purpose it doesn't have to be for um, cards and it could be any size but that's how you make can make an easy journal with the string signature so you can especially for an art journal if you want to you know turn it into an art journal with using watercolor paper you can then slide it through like that as well and then when you pull it out you can work on it and you can make it one whole spread if you want to. The options are endless. I do recommend decorating the underneath of it first like I did here so that uh, you know you don't have to undo it to put it underneath but you know, I probably could slide something under there and that will actually help to tighten it up a little bit if I put a thick piece of card un cardstock under here um, it might help loop tighten it. Anyway, that's that. Now, I will show you the other method. If you don't want to use cardstock for your pages, if you want to use, um, like Cat Hand did, your Coles bag and use up your um, supermarket bag. So you get a neutral sort of base that matches the edges of your book. We'll, we'll do that now. So you get your Coles bag. <laughs> well, you're going to need to know this length because this is the page size. So it's 10 centimetres or 4 inches. So then you're going to multiply that by 4 because you want to double these up. So 4 4s are 16. So you're going to need 16 inches minimum. So if you want to just fold them in to two halves, it's the easiest way. So you're going to want, this is the wrong size one, I cut this one too short. <laughs> I didn't multiply it by 4, I multiplied it by 3, I went 12 in. I need 4. four times three is 12 so I cut it 12 inches long and added an inch for extra folds but I need it 16 inches now 16 in you so you want it 16 inches if it's a four inch journal and if you want to just fold them in you can glue those down and there's your page trim off the edges and that's a page now that's not the way cat did it so I'll show you the way cat did it um, but that way will work and is probably the easiest but you might see this I mean I fold the writing in you might want to make sure that you're you've got to be close but you can't be too close because you've got to have room for it to fold so if you get it too close it doesn't want to fold so then the other way of doing it so that's one way one of the easiest ways the way that cat did it was to fold the end and fold it into the center and then she did it on both sides so she would fold that side, glue that lip down, fold it in, fold this one again, which I haven't got that, and then glue it into the centre and then fold it. That's another way of doing it. You get lots of neat edges and you get this little ridge in the centre. But, but because I'm putting the coals writing on the inside, I kept getting this red line. So I've done mine slightly differently. So I've still folded it into the centre. You want it to be just off the centre. 
Okay, so you get your piece of paper that is 16 centimetres long, plus you're going to want to add on two half inches, so another inch. So you're going to want it about 17 centimetres long. Um, this is 16 and a half, that's fine. Something more than 16 inches. And fold it into the centre, but not the centre, you're going to leave a gap. Okay, so just inch from the gap. So this is now folded. That's going to be your, the fold of your page. Next you're going to fold the end in and then fold it again to the centre. Now you're not going to glue anything just yet because you want to make sure everything's folded in the right place. Okay, so that's folded in just shy of the centre and then to make sure it's going to work you're going to fold it over the top. Okay, and then now you're going to fold it over the top again. And so now you've got it folded up with all your creases. Unfold it. Now you've got that one folded in. Now you can fold them under, but what I'm going to do is fold it. I'm going to do it like that. So that extra piece is going to go across, and that extra piece is going to come over the top. And then, then it's going to be folded. That way then I don't see any of the red, and that becomes my crease. So I'm just going to glue that one down first. And then this one down and fold. So I've pre done them because um, I want to use that one as a sample. So that's one where it's not, that's where it's done cat's way, where I, you fold both ends and then you fold it in, but I can see the red bit, so that doesn't like that. Um, and this one is done my way. So I folded it, glued it under, folded it over the top. Now, the reason why you want to do it folded is you get this lovely, lovely folded edge. If you just stuck two pieces together and then trimmed it, you could do that. But you're not going to get as nice an edge as the folded edge. You have to trim the top. This is what you would get if you had it on the other edge. So you get that on the top and the bottom. But this way you get a nice edge on the edges of the pages. So that's how you make your pages using your Coles bag. If I'd made those for this journal, they're probably going to be too big because it's for a different size. You've got to make them to fit your journal, whatever size you ended up with. Oh, they might be all right. So I've got these that I've glued. These are a little bit thicker. They will tighten up the string as well. Got another glued one. I left some of them unglued so that I could show people. This one's not glued, but I can just put it in for now. Okay, so that's also quite nice. You know, I think I like my yellow ones better. But if you just wanted to use up your, your um, Coles bags, your supermarket bags, there's your pages. And then you end up decorating them with, you know, with cardstock. So you will glue down your cardstock. You don't have to leave a border. You can glue down your cardstock and then you'll work on your card and then you'll, and then you'll um, glue your card in there. And so it'll look really pretty. If you have a look at uh, Cat's... Um, so it looks something like this. I'm, let's pretend that's a page. It looks something like that. Cardstock in the background, a bit of washi tape for decoration, and your card that you've you've done with your mixed media on top. So there you go. There's a little journal. How to make one. What different ideas you could use to um, make your pages out of supermarket bags or out of brown paper. Anything that's got a reasonable thickness to it will be a good base for your cards. Um, we're going to be doing altered cards during the year. So I don't know how often I'll do them, but or whether I'll just show you the finished product because I'm going to be doing them at my art group, I'm not too sure. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you how to make a little journal, any size you like really. Um, obviously I trimmed that one up with gold, put the border on, but I, I didn't use the same method. I actually made a secret, what do you call it, secret binding and did a three hole, traditional three hole pamphlet stitch on those. But that was just the way I did that one. But the spine is just too big. I just don't like it. It's... Anyway, so that's the general concept um, using uh, brown paper bags. And of course, look, you can, you can because I could see the coals in the middle, I just put washi tape in the middle to match the front of it. That's another way to fix the problem. But of course, if I, if I do a red page, I'll have to cover that up or take it off. So I don't know what colors I'm doing the, the, the pages. So there we go. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry for uh, yeah the fumbles and um, making a few mistakes, but um, just yeah just let you know that we all do them, <laughs> and it's paper and glue, so there's usually a way of fixing it. So it's not like it's. I mean, if you cut it the wrong size, I've got a few pieces of cardboard and chipboard here and there that I've cut up the wrong too. But what I've done is I've made up little kits with the right size cards and the spine and some and some cards ready to go. And I'll probably put a piece of this gauze in there as well so that the ladies on Wednesday, next Wednesday, can just basically start gluing and not have to be measuring and cutting and all that sort of stuff. So that's the video for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, please check out Cat Hand, The Paper Outpost and Treasure Books. I'll put links to uh, the videos that I watched in the description box below. So there we are. I think I've rambled on enough. It's probably going to be three hours long. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.